Well, hi, my name is Sue Coleman. Uh, this is my, my show, it's called Making Way, and we're here at the Hudson River Gallery. Um, these these uh, pieces represent mostly newer work, but there are a few older pieces that I had uh, given back to me that I'd had at the college where I work. I work at Cornell College and I've worked as a gallery coordinator and a drawing instructor um, for the past 22 years. And uh, I've been obsessed with landscape for a really long time. But the pieces in this show, um, I guess you would say they represent uh, places near where I live. Uh, and places that I often explore, and that I, I like to go walking in these places, and have worked in them numerous times, or walked through them many times. Um, some are right outside my back door, you know, and some, some have, well, they all seem to have some things in common, which are uh, uh, a love of light, and, uh, how that light transforms a place. Um, I think also the idea of movement. I, I, I always want to have a sense of movement in the work because I think of landscape as something living, not as a, just a thing, you know. Um, I never want to see it as just background because it's kind of all embracing that's the way I think of it. And um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. I like to work small when I'm outside. I like to work larger when I'm in my studio. Um, and so sometimes we'll go out, I have friends, we go in and work with plein air. Um, and a few spots near us. Uh, Abbey Creek School is one of them because it's so close. And so there's several pieces here that have to do with that place. Uh, also the Palisades, which is very near Mount Vernon. Wapsipinicon Park is one of the places that I love to go to. Uh, it's got so many kinds of uh, topography, you know, from steep stairways that are made out of, you know, local rock, and uh, the water is up or the water is down, and uh, various kinds of trees and, you know, bridges and things. Um, but always the thing that connects it all is what the light does, always. And uh, it seems to be the kind of, uh, I don't know, element, I guess you'd say, that, uh, that really transforms things for me. The strange thing about seasonal light, um, well, it changes all the time and everything. Right. And so um, with winter in particular, um, I love dealing with those kinds of sh colors of shadows and, you know, the way light kind of turns in the space, you know, like the sun's here and then things move out and radiate from that. Um, the shadows, uh, I didn't see shadows as color when I was younger because I wasn't really paying attention to that. I was paying attention to how cold it was, or the snow, or, you know, how raw things were. But um, the more I paint and draw, the more I realize that uh, the absence of light brings its own kind of color, and, you know, reflections and all that kind of stuff. And it, it can shift from, you know, from, from one color to another, just in an open passage or in a, in a shadowed passage. And uh, I'm looking at one of the paintings behind me right now that's, you know, I was thinking winter light is probably one of the most interesting things when there is light in winter, you know. But you get out there and you start to see things. You know, it's very still and, it, and you can really hear your own thoughts and, and um, there's something about the light, how it moves, the color. And, uh, you know, if the wind blows, it's a whole other thing. There's water. Sometimes it's frozen. And I get down um, at the level in this painting here in 
particular that's around the corner here. I was with my, my dog, her name was Moonshine. It was a snowy day in February, but it was a sunny, snowy day in February, and it was like 38, 40 degrees. And once you start walking, you warm up. Not enough to paint or draw, but enough to appreciate um, the color and the light. And the more you walk, something happens with your brain. Something happens uh, that has to do with that breathing deeply and that walking and that and how the color, you know, affects your mind, I think. And I just start seeing it more vibrantly the more I walk. And I think the that Moonshine had a thing for that. She understood. So she would just drag me up these hills, you know, and there'd be all these prints of different animals and stuff, you know. And then each one of those prints uh, has a shadow within it too, you know, because it's, it's a different topography from the rest of the snow. And uh, those, those moments, uh, there's something so magical about it that if you if you can start working from a photograph and get into this drawing, then the next thing you know, you're not even thinking about the photograph. It's just like the, you know, the the picture plane becomes a kind of way of activating your memory. You know, once you get it started. But when you look at the world from from you know a crouching height, you know the grass is in front of you. Everything is in front of you and. And you can see these different layers in a whole different way. I remember when I first started to look at the landscape around here, I thought, oh, okay, you know. And then um, when I started to paint it and, and draw it, that's when I started to see it because I realized, you know, we have, we have sky here. Yeah, we have corn here. and. Um, and not that corn's everything, but you know what grows on this place. It, it, some of it is just mind bending. The color in it, celebrating the beauty of this place is 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 a good thing to do.